In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear friend, I'm sure you very well. On this Saturday, I share with you the prayer to be a good steward of wealth. Dear Lord, I know that it is a principle that is frequently seen in the Bible that we reap what we sow. And I also know that some unscrupulous people have suggested that this can be used as an almost magical formula that anyone can apply to prayer which I know to be very unbiblical. Lord, I want to ask you to give me an understanding of how to sow biblically so that in due time I may reap to your glory. Whether it is my money, my time, my talents, my gifts, or simply myself. Lord, I want to make the best use of all that you have graciously given to me. Not for selfish reasons, but to glorify your name. For all that I have comes from you, and I am simply seeking to give back to you what you have generously given me. Lord, I simply desire to be a good steward and a faithful servant with all that you have given me. Lord, I don't know how best to use what you have given me. I don't know how to sow as you would have me to do. I know that I have made many mistakes in the past. And so I come to you today to ask you to teach me, Lord. Teach me how to number my days and make best use of all that I have received from your hand of blessing, including my money, my time, my talent, my gifts, and myself. Lord, unto your hands, I give all I have and pray that in due time it will be profitable. Grant this through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friend, on the 11th day of November, in this year of our Lord and Savior 2023, we celebrate Saturday of week 31 of Ordinary Time. The Gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 16, verses 9 to 15. Yesterday, we saw Jesus give the example of a corrupt but astute manager who took effective steps to guarantee his future employment. Today, he goes on to warn us about our own use of material things. We are to use dishonest wealth in such a way that we make friends for ourselves. When this approach fails us, we hope that a welcome into the eternal homes will be ours. We are reminded of how the crafty steward in the parable ensured his future. In the mind of Luke, the friends we should be making are the poor and needy who will be on our side before God's judgment seat because 
we had invested our wealth in them. As we read in Matthew, I tell you just as you did to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. Alia We saw a good example of a man who had made so much money out of his harvest that he sat back to enjoy the rest of his life, which ended that very night. That is not the way to make friends with one's material goods. In one sense, there is nothing wrong with having a lot of money, but it is how we use those riches that is the question. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. In other words, if we can be trusted with the material goods, that come into our lives and use them to build the kingdom of God to create a more just and equitable society, then we can be trusted with something much greater to live forever face to face with our God. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth who will entrust you with the true riches. And again, if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? And that reminds us that the material goods that came into our lives do not belong absolutely to us. Everything on this earth belongs to all. We are only the stewards of what has come into our possession, and we will be judged on how we make use of it. On our use will depend to a large extent our receiving the one thing that will really become our own, the unending happiness that God wishes us to have in company with him. That leads obviously to the next warning that we cannot at the same time give ourselves totally to God and become slaves of money and the material. We saw that in the case of the rich man who wanted to follow Jesus, he was the slave of his possessions and so could not surrender his life to Jesus. Many of us think we can and we try to compromise but to give ourselves to God completely, we must become free of the lure of money and the acquisition of material things. It does not mean we do not have money or material things, but what we do, what we do have is ultimately used for God's love and service and the love and service of our brothers and sisters. On hearing all these, the Pharisees, whom Luke calls avaricious, mocked Jesus for what they felt was unrealistic idealism. There are many today who would echo their views, but those 
who have taken Jesus' words to heart know that what he says is true. We've seen, we've seen this in the lives of some people in our own time. And, Sandre, we have also been or seen the opposite. Some with all their money and fame and luxurious living are missing something precious. The freedom to give and share their whole self with those who are destitute. For what is prized by humans is an abomination in the sight of God. The opposite is also true. On whose side do I find myself? Are you one of those people that God has really endowed with wealth? Yet you use your wealth to dehumanize others. Or are you those people endowed with wealth and have used your wealth to know God better? Please don't allow yourself to be harassed by your own wealth. <laughs> but if you can, and because I know you can, use whatever wealth God has given you to know him better, serve him better, and love him better. Have a blessed Saturday.